hello friends welcome back to my youtube channel doctor's corner in this today's video we are going to discuss about one of the very important clinical syndrome known as dressler syndrome okay dressler syndrome so what in this exactly is this dressler syndrome that is the definition of dressler syndrome so in this particular video we are going to discuss about the definition of the dressler syndrome what are the other names of the dressler syndrome what is the cause of this syndrome what are the clinical presentation of this syndrome and the lab diagnosis and treatment and differential diagnosis of dressler syndrome okay so first of all what do you mean by dressler syndrome or definition of dressler syndrome so it is a form of secondary pericarditis okay which occurs as a result of injury to the pericardium either due to uh, myocardial infarction or a uh, post cardiac surgery okay so you know that uh, there is a outer layer of the heart there is a layer that is known as pericardium right the middle layer is uh, myocardium and the inner layer is endocardium right so this outer pericardium will get inflamed that inflammation it is called as pericarditis and more specifically it is a secondary form of the pericarditis so which occur as a result of injury to this outer layer or the pericardium and this injury may be due to the myocardial infarction that is the heart attack or cardiac surgery if there is injury to this pericardium okay so that clinical condition it is known as dressler syndrome hope the definition is clear so i repeat what is dressler syndrome it is a secondary form of pericarditis which occurs as a result of injury to the pericardium due either due to myocardial infarction or cardiac surgery okay now it is also known as the other names of this is post myocardial infarction syndrome because it occurs in patients who is who has suffered from myocardial infarction and post traumatic pericarditis or post cardiac injury syndrome it is associated with this different syndromes post cardiac injury syndrome or post pericardiotomy syndrome okay it is also known as or it or it may be associated with this syndromes okay now coming to the history history or epidemiology about this uh, syndrome okay so when exactly this syndrome was uh, discovered okay so in the year 1956 william dis uh, william dressler proposed this syndrome okay so he presented originally this syndrome in a uh, in a research article or a paper in a research journal okay so he has uh, according to his finding he has seen uh, in a series of patients suffered from myocardial infarction so around after 1 to 6 weeks of duration okay within weeks or few months uh, few patients developed some uh, signs and symptoms which he described typically as which is now we know it as the dressler syndrome but the incidence of the syndrome is very less it is just uh, according to him at that time was around 3 to 4% some studies say 7% but it is very less 3 to 4% of the patients who has undergone myocardial infarction and under treatment and under recovery so after few weeks or months they develop the signs and symptoms of this typical syndrome okay but nowadays in this modern era the incidence has dropped down to less than 1% okay by the modern techniques of the surgical procedures and the uh, cardiac management so because of this the incidence has uh, reduced drastically so it is very less nowadays so what is the exact cause of this syndrome why actually this will occur okay so as we said in the definition it is basically a secondary form of the pericarditis but why this pericarditis will occur so cause still it's not clear but uh, many theories and hypotheses which suggest that it is immune mediated response okay so there are antibodies against the myocardium it is the my anti myocardial antibodies which may act on the pericardium and causes the pericarditis or something whatever or immune complex gets deposited so mainly it is the immune mediated response it is the immune mediated response which is the but exact cause is not known it may be some immune complexes get deposited in the pericardium and it may lead to this particular syndrome now coming to the clinical features what are the clinical features how a patient with this particular syndrome will present okay so i 
typically i said you it will appear in one to six weeks duration after the post myocardial infarction or the cardiac surgery so the patient will present with the following signs and symptoms first we will see if the symptoms so a patient will come with fever okay fever typically around 100.5 100%, .5, 100% to 102 degree Fahrenheit or 38 to 40 degree centigrade okay and also typically he will complain of the constrictive type of the chest pain okay constrictive chest pain or the pleuritic chest pain mm -hmm. so this uh, typically it is seen then uh, patient will present uh, it will the patient will be irritable or irritability will be one of the symptom then along with that there is uh, weakness that is malaise patient will few patient will be uh, uh, come with the severe fatigability or weakness okay post mi so again few patients will present with joint pains or also known as arthralgia okay joint pains and uh, dyspnea okay that is difficulty in breathing and even with palpitations so signs typical signs on examination what is seen is tachycardia tachycardia signs tachycardia means increase in the heart rate also along with that palpitations okay so patient will be aware of their uh, increased heart rate that is patient will feel that heartbeat that is known as palpitations palpitations uh, so this typical palpitation then one of the sign in complications we'll discuss about that complication like in cardiac tamponade and constrictive pericarditis pulses paradoxes is seen what exactly is this pulses paradoxes we'll discuss in some other video or make a separate video about pulses paradoxes right now so in a normally during the inspiration the uh, there is a slight decrease in the blood pressure so this normal phenomenon is exaggerated in constrictive pericarditis and uh, cardiac tamponade and the blood pressure will fall more than 10 millimeter of mercury during inspiration that is known as pulses paradoxes so typically in the complication of this restless syndrome it can be seen and one of the most important clinical feature or sign on uh, auscultation is the uh, this one pericardial friction rub okay pericardial friction rub or pericardial rub it is uh, which is heard with the help of the stethoscope so that is one of the feature of this restless syndrome and if there is a lung involvement okay lung involvement and it then we may also see these features of the pneumonitis so these are the typical signs and symptoms of uh, and clinical features of the restless syndrome now what are the laboratory diagnosis of this particular uh, uh, lab diagnosis so how we can diagnose and confirm this particular syndrome or restless syndrome so basic investigations like cbc will show increase in the wbc count and uh, inflammatory markers like erythrocyte sedimentation rate will increase and the c-reactive proteins will increase okay and also uh, on chest x-ray okay chest x-ray pa view so typically there will be flattening of the costophrenic uh, angle in this uh, cardiacal heart is enlarged huh, because of this uh, pericarditis and on ecg on an ecg typical features of pericarditis like uh, st elevation and pr segment depression is seen uh, along with the t-wave inversion or uh, small or low voltage qrss complexes are seen okay so these are the ecg changes then even echocardiography uh, can be done so in the echocardiography uh, there might be evidence of the pericardial fluid echocardiography and if at all from the echocardiography the pericardial fluid or pericarditic features are not seen then cardiac mri can be done so in that uh, plural uh, pericardial fluid thickening or the fluid can be clearly visualized okay thickening of the pericardium so now what is the treatment of this particular condition how you will treat it so generally so this condition can be treated on an opd basis uh, if the patient is hemodynamically stable okay if they present with the signs and symptoms after one or two weeks of uh, post mi so it can be treated on an opd basis and the uh, most common treatment is NSAIDs okay non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and the most important NSAID 
already is what we use in this clinical condition is the aspirin high doses of the aspirin okay which is tapered down uh, uh, in four to six uh, uh, weeks so, okay now those patients who don't respond with this nsids a course of corticosteroids like prednisone can be given corticosteroids can be given again it can be tapered down for the next uh, four weeks and also uh, one drug colchicine okay so this drug uh, many studies says that this can be used as a preventive for the dressless syndrome that is this drug is given before the cardiac surgery one week before cardiac surgery so that uh, it will reduce the signs and symptoms of this particular uh, syndrome and few studies does not suggest such things uh, but however it has certain role uh, to prevent the re recurrence okay colchicine okay now what about the complications of this uh, dressless uh, syndrome so the complications uh, of this particular dessler syndrome two important complication is one is um, cardiac tamponade so there is a triad scene we will discuss about this cardiac tamponade in next uh, or some other videos and constrictive pericarditis so because of the fluid present uh, in the pericardial space okay excess of fluid uh, because of that it will causes the mechanical pressure of that fluid will uh, causes the heart to not to pump properly okay that is a mechanically it will compress that is known as cardiac tamponade then constrictive pericarditis so because of the inflammation of the outer layer it may cause uh, it may form a scar tissue again it will hinder the normal uh, functioning or the normal contraction of the heart so it is one of the complications and if the it may lead up to it will land up to the hypotension or some complication in which patient need uh, admission an inpatient admission and the treatment some surgical treatment uh, has to be done so for this particular uh, complication pericardial drainage okay pericardial drainage can be done pericardial drainage and also pericardiosynthesis okay pericardiosynthesis uh, with subsequent catheter drainage pericardiosynthesis with subsequent catheter drainage can be done if the complication arises then what about the differential diagnosis so this uh, uh, condition has to be differentiated with some uh, clinical conditions like pulmonary embolisms congestive heart failure pneumonia uremia and uh, sepsis so even endocarditis so this has to be differentiated with this clinical condition so let me summarize the topic so what is dressler syndrome so dressler syndrome is the secondary form of the pericarditis which occurs as a result of injury to the pericardium uh, either due to the myocardial infarction or cardiac surgery then it is also known as by with this condition or associated with this condition so in 1956 William Dessler described this condition and the incidence is bit less the cause is immune mediated and the clinical features are fever constrictive chest pain irritability malaise joint pain dyspnea tachycardia palpitations pulses paradoxes pericardial friction rub and even pneumonitis so lab diagnosis also we have seen typical ecg changes and the treatment so if you like our video please subscribe our channel doctor's corner and share it with your friends and also i want like to give an important disclaimer that so these videos are mainly for the educational purpose for the medical students so anyone who is just seeing for the sake of knowledge so we strongly suggest uh, and uh, strongly recommend that so don't take home medication or the self medication after seeing this particular videos for any of the conditions which we will be describing in the subsequent uh, lectures or videos so please uh, 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 take medications from your healthcare provider and don't take self medication by seeing this particular videos or the health educational videos okay so that's all for today's video thank you have a nice day